Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. In today's episode we're going to be starting um, a new sort of series where we look at beginner information. Now this isn't going to be creating a video game or creating any code, but we'll be talking about a lot of the things you should expect to see and use when making your own video game. Uh, we're going to be starting off at the very, very beginning uh, looking at variables. Um, we're going to go through the 11 most important ones I think you should be using uh, or at least consider using when you're creating your video games at some point or another. Um, now, if you're in my Discord, you'll know someone called Mr. Mr. Meerkat. He's been helping uh, me with the Pokemon code and he is currently setting up his own channel. I will be adding his channel to the um, featured section of my YouTube channel. So go and check him out, show him some love. Um, He's going to be starting, a um, bit like me with the beginner information, he's actually going to be starting beginner tutorials where he actually creates some very basic games, a bit like Pong, Mario, those sort of ideas. He also has his Discord. You can find that in my Discord um, where you can sort of vote to see what he makes over the next sort of week or so. So moving on, we're going to start at the very beginning, as I said, and we're going to be talking about variables today. Now, variables are... Um, nodes where you can store single information um whereas arrays are where you can store multiple pieces of information but we'll talk about arrays in the next episode or or two but today we're going to talk about single variables like um where we store some information something we want uh to know or our system to know um down the line now as i said i'm going to talk about the top most 11 i think are useful uh, if you have any others that you think are useful, please put them in the comments. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this. Uh, we have two different sections to a variable. So if we pull off from our right side the where the variables are listed, uh, on the left side, sorry, where the variables are listed, you can do this, and it'll come up with a get or a set. Now, the get looks like this, and the set is like this. Now, the get is where you are getting that information, so you'd plug this into something to receive retrieve this information from the variable. And setting is where we could change that information. The first one we're going to look at is Boolean. Now, Boolean's um, useful because you might want to ask your system, your code, a question. So, for example, are we sprinting? Are we crouching? And we can use this to drive that. And usually you would use that with a branch, like so. That's how we would use a Boolean. And again, like it says here, true or false, uh, yes or no, one or zero. That's kind of the general idea of a Boolean. So are we sprinting? True. Then we would um, change, maybe affect our stamina. If it's false, then we would not affect our stamina, for example. So that's a Boolean. We also have integers. Now, these are whole numbers. This is uh, the system deals with like one, two, three, four. Um, for example, you might have money value. So let's say you had 100 uh, money, that would be value 100. And then you want to add another 100, you would add um, 100, for example. You'd say 100, okay? And you could do this as a plus, for example. So you could say integer. So let's say we had 100 plus 100. That would then come out as 200. So they ultimately deal in whole numbers. Um, let's move that out of the way. We then have float. Now float is like the decimal version. So you could have uh, 4.25. You could have minus 3.6 or 1.0007. It's just allowing you to um, create those fractional uh, numbers. And these would be good for things like health bars and thirst, hunger, stamina, where you want a more precise value to be used. That's where we get our flow. And they work in exactly the same way as an uh, integer works. It, as I say, it's just adding in that decimal. We have a name variable. Now, you'd use this for uh, naming something like, let's say you had an object in the world and you want to call it an apple or you want to call it... Uh, a sword or maybe you've got uh, zombies or you have a character like an AI character you want to give it a name like Darren Jake that's what you would use your name variables for the string now you'll probably notice this from like things like print string uh, these are like a sentence uh, for example um, a sentence in alphanumerical which obviously uses like letters and numbers 
to create um, your sentence. So like, for example, you might want it to come up on screen saying, uh, hello, name, how are you? You would use a string to get that value. Next, we have a vector. Now, this is a location, a 3D location within the world. So you've probably seen me use it in the Pokemon clone series um, where we get the vector, uh, which is our location of our character at any one given time on the X, Y, and Z value front. And you could use this to get that location or set that location or tell something to go to that location. You would use a vector. Rotator, that's very similar to the location, but it's dealing with your 360 rotation. Uh, again, you can you can manipulate it on an X, Y, and Z value, but this is just telling you the rotation where your player is facing within the world or the object, uh, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. That is what you would use to, to determine which way it's facing. Next, we have the object reference. Now, this is just a, uh, ob a reference to a... Um, uh, an object in the world or a blueprint you can use it to access another blueprint information you could use an object uh, variable to store that uh, within your code you have a transform node now that is the combination of the vector the rotator but it also includes uh, scale for example if I pull off from here and I say make we can make a relative transform or we can oh make a normal transform which uh, again splits out that location rotation and scale in which we can plug in for example if we had a get of our vector we could say that's the location we want and using the rotator that is the rotation we want and you can change the scale as well if you would like to uh, and transforms are very useful for storing all three of those values under one variable uh, and just two little bonuses so this brings us up to 11 we have a struct variable and an enum variable i will go into greater depths with these but a struct if you have a structure um, that stores multiple variables in one area so if i break this now i am using one of my uh, ringmon game variables but you can store multiple variables within one location under this struct and then you can just change your uh, variable typing on the left hand side by searching uh, for what you need so for example this one for me is my item strut you can just search for it and set it to be that and then using that you can break it or make it you can make it as well to um, change these values uh, and it will update and store all under this one variable and lastly we have the enum now this is normally a list of different items or list of names um, that you want to uh, utilize it's a list essentially uh, of things that you would may potentially need to call in this instance i've used my ringmon's status here i have frozen poisoned paralyzed burned confused and asleep and you can call those uh, when you need them so from for me as an example i use my enum to set whether my creature is poisoned paralyzed burned um and then from there we can check that down the line using our get and do stuff like take away damage depending on what one of these steps you might skip a move things like that all of these to me are incredibly useful um hopefully this explanation this brief explanation has sort of helped you to understand what each of these are used for uh, in the next episode we'll go into some of these in greater depth and show some examples of why you would use them We'll look at arrays in the, in the future. We'll also look at things like um, BPIs, what classes are, um, and all that sort of stuff. If there's any other small beginner things you'd like to know as well, leave it in the comments. I will be happy to cover it. This is all for anybody who's new to Unreal Engine um, and they really don't know where to begin or what things are and how they work. Uh, I'd love to explain them to you. Uh, in greater depths but this is just as I say the top 11 variables that I think everyone should in theory know and potentially use within their video games thank you so much guys for watching uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to leave a little like and a comment with anything else you'd like to know and I'll see you in the next episode take care